I'm Martha Stewart, and this is Everything I Eat in a Day. The first thing I do when I wake up is check my iPads. I have two, and I check for how much power is left in each of them. I plug them in, and I go take a shower. It's very difficult for me to stay in bed later than, say, 6.15. I wake up really early, way earlier than that. I've already read the newspaper, the New York Times, cover to cover, done the crossword puzzle, tried to do wordplay, and then I get up and go and do my ablutions. Then I go into the kitchen for my green juice. My green juice is very special to me. I think it's really the secret of good skin. I think it's the secret of good, healthy hair. And I've been juicing for, I oh, many years. I remember getting the first juicer, which was kind of a contraption. Now I have a really great Breville Blucer, it's called, but I like juice. I like to juice the vegetables. And the vegetables primarily come from my vegetable greenhouse or my garden. All year round, I'm growing my own vegetables because I want organic, I want clean, I want tasty, and I want healthy. So the green juice, cucumbers, parsley, mint, if I have it, a little piece of ginger, which I do not grow, like a half of an orange, including the skin. What am I missing? Oh, I'm missing celery. Celery is excellent. With the leaves, of course, don't throw those leaves away. It's extremely important to keep the leaves on. Oh, and I must not forget a very important ingredient, Pineapple. I don't like to put a lot of fruit in, and I don't put kale, and I don't put cabbage. Kale makes you burp, gives you a stomach ache. just doesn't taste good in a juice. After my green juice, I generally run outside and get in my Polaris, which is like a little four-wheel drive vehicle, and I drive around the property. I also check on my animals. I check on the horses. I check on the donkeys. I have five of Sicilian donkeys. They're really cute, and they're very lively. I check on the 20 peacocks. I check on the 34 homing pigeons, and I check on the 200 plus laying hens and roosters on the 17 geese that come from four different countries. The dogs love to accompany me on this little round of the property. And that's only if I have time. If I have to get in the car and go someplace, then that uh, little tour uh, is checked on by phone. After I do my rounds, I go back to my kitchen and I treat myself to the most delicious cappuccino made on my trusted San Marco two cup cappuccino machine. It's sort of the hub of the kitchen. And I just found really good organic milk at Mast Brothers. Mast Brothers left Brooklyn and they opened a huge factory where they not only sell milk from Battenkill Farms in New York State, they make their own delicious chocolate bars. They grind their own flour. Oh, they're making vinegar now too, delicious vinegar, and it's a beautiful factory. Just the most beautiful modern factory right in Mount Kisco. I am not a snacker. Um, I try very hard to keep nothing in the house that will entice me as a snack. That said, uh, people are always bringing me delicious pastries from New York and breads from here and there, but I really like to keep that away from me. When I was commuting to New York to my office, I would stay in New York till after dinner. So that would be dinner with probably a cocktail or two or a wine, bread and butter, you know, all those things, even dessert. So now at home, I just don't do that. I try very, very hard to eat a very light lunch, maybe a tuna fish salad. I, I, I make a really good tuna fish salad. Italian tuna, of course, packed in olive oil, celery, crispy apple, maybe a half of a shallot, lots and lots of lemon juice, and a little bit of mayonnaise. Salt, pepper, it is really good. Not too long ago, uh, dinner was utterly delicious. I invited three friends to come for dinner, three bachelors, and during COVID again, it's been rather difficult because everybody has to be tested, everybody has to be safe, everybody has to be socially distanced, but last Saturday I made a delicious dinner. I had gone to the store on Wednesday or Thursday and I bought a plump organic d'artagnan chicken. And I bought uh, a rack of lamb, also d'artagnan, for string beans. I went to my greenhouse and I picked all kinds of beautiful frise and uh, soft butter crunch lettuces. And I had, oh, new French turnips from my greenhouse also beautiful, perfect round turnips. I've recently learned how to roast the chicken sort of like Nomad style or 11 Madison Park style. 
pretty much the same as all other roast chickens, but with one specific difference. After you uh, wash and dry the chicken and salt and pepper the interior of the chicken, then you let it sit in the refrigerator overnight to kind of dry out. Then the day of cooking, um, you if you have some black truffles lying around, it's really nice to slice them thinly and push them under the loosened skin of the chicken. Truss the chicken really tightly. You can learn how to truss a chicken. Believe me, I learned from my butchers in Westport, Connecticut 40 years ago. Take a whole stick of unsalted butter, the best butter like Plugra or Kerrygold, nice, nice butter, but it has to be room temperature, and you slather it all over the skin of the chicken. Then you put it back in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Then right before your guests arrive, one hour before, you put that butter slathered chicken into a 425 degree oven for one hour. It was the most delicious chicken. And when I have friends over for dinner, I really like to open an appropriate bottle or two or three of wine. We have a company called Martha Stewart Wine Company. You don't have to go anywhere but to your computer or to your iPhone to order a case or two or three of wine that's uh, chosen by me. You always have the right wine because we make the suggestions what to serve with what. You're always going to be pouring the right wine for the right dish. I'm a vodka drinker if you can categorize me as any kind of drinker. I really like to drink uh, just a small vodka cocktail. I never drink alone. I do not pour myself a drink if I'm home alone. I just don't open a bottle of wine. I don't light the candles. I don't get in the bath and have lots of cocktails. I don't do that kind of stuff. But when friends come over, um, having a nice vodka on the rocks with a slice of orange from my own greenhouse. I have a citrus greenhouse and we have really good oranges. So a big thick slice of orange in that vodka. And the vodka has to be really good. It has to be like the best Belvedere vodka, Imperia vodka from Russia. Also, my daughter just introduced me to the lovely Greyhound vodka cocktail, which is just grapefruit juice, freshly squeezed. And if you add salted rim to the glass, it's called a salty dog. And that is also very delicious. Delicious. It's almost like drinking a margarita, but it's with vodka. In my refrigerator, which you would be surprised, I have a great big professional glass doored refrigerator, but my refrigerator is pretty like bare, bare bones. Good Parmesan cheeses, cream cheese for the dog's pills if they're on pills, really good organic milk, butter, very important to have lots of good butter. Creme fraiche for omelets. It's so good folded into an omelet. And I have fresh eggs from the chickens and that saves me all the time. I also love to bake. Uh, just the other day, I baked two big Sally Lunn babka bread. A slice of that is light and fluffy. It's delicious, lightly toasted, and it makes the best, the best breakfast bread pudding. So that's pretty much what I like to eat in a day. And thank you so much for watching.